Welcome, friends, to chapter 5 of the book of Romans in our continuing study of this great book of the Bible and our research into the power of the gospel, that God's powerful good news to reveal his righteousness in our life applies not just to the moment of our salvation when we are declared to be righteous, justified, uh, but to all of our Christian experience. And God's grace that that saved us from the penalty of sin is God's favor and grace that keeps us, that empowers us in this new life that we have because of Christ. And in Romans chapter 5, we begin to see the clues about God's continuing purpose uh, for the believer in Christ. I want you to uh, look at chapter 5 and verse 1, and I want to give you a warning today because Romans 5, 1 through 5 are among the most encouraging verses in all the Bible. And so if you're not encouraged by uh, this podcast today, then I have failed because I can't think of a better way to encourage you today than for you to understand what God says to you as a believer uh, in these verses. So look at uh, Romans chapter 5, verse number 1. Therefore, so we made the case in chapters 3 and 4 that we're justified by faith, especially in chapter 4. So now that we know that, now that that's been established, therefore being justified by faith, what's the benefit? So if I've been declared to be righteous by God, not because of my works, not because of my adherence to the law, but because of my trust in what God has told me, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and that he uh, paid my sin upon that cross, and that I have access to his righteousness by faith. When that's true, and I'm declared to be righteous, what are the benefits? Well, look at the first one here in verse number one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace with God. So, when a believer has, has invested his faith in Jesus Christ and is saved, the Bible says that his condition now is he is at peace. He has, the, he has peace with God. And what does that imply? That implies that before salvation, before faith was invested, that there was enmity. And that's the exact language that the Apostle Paul uses in Ephesians chapter 2. And so as an enemy of God, I'm the subject of God's wrath and God's punishment. But because of what Jesus did and because of my apprehension of that by faith, now I have not a, not a truce with God. It's not that God says, okay, I am no longer angry with you, but I'll kind of treat you neutral. No, that, that's not the point. The point is there's peace with God. There's full restoration. There is, we've been made one again. Uh, the enemy has become a friend. Uh, we are now made at one. He sees us the way he sees his own son. For indeed, I am a son of God, a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't get any better than that. And the Bible says being justified by faith. It's not, it's not that uh, I, justification is this process where, okay, well, I've got to get saved and saved and saved and saved, and then I'll have peace with God. Something I, I I can lose. No, no, because I have been declared righteous. That's justification. The act, one-time thing, whereby God declares the believer in Jesus to be righteous. So now that I have been declared righteous, then I have, that's my permanent possession, I have peace with God. That's the point. Uh, I have been passed from death unto life. I have this newfound peace with God. That's my status that is such good news. You think about the fact that this world wants peace. We look at the headlines in the, uh, on the internet or in the newspaper, if you're old enough to still read a newspaper, and what do we see? We see wars and fighting and hatred and uh, all of what goes along with it. And what does this world need? This world needs peace, but not just a peace of mind, uh, not just a peace of circumstance, peace on earth, but peace with God. And really the peace of God 
is only available as we have peace with God. And peace on earth will only be realized one day as the Prince of Peace rules and reigns. And those of us that have peace with God are there with him. So, wow, the peace of God. Now look at verse number two. By whom? By Christ. So in Christ are all these benefits. That's why the Bible says in Romans 8 that he, God, that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all good things. Every good thing we have in this Christian life is because of Jesus. So the Bible says, by whom also we have access. I like that term. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So the grace that saves us is a grace that remains available to us. The limitless supply of God's grace that it, that keeps us and that empowers us in this Christian life, uh, that grace is available to us every single moment. So by whom also now we have access to it. Uh, before we came to Christ, we had no access to God's grace. It was the it was the trust of Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, trusting what He did for me on the cross that that. Un- unlocked the grace of God in my life that allowed the free flow of grace in my life so that now I have power over my sin and, and a potential to live for God and uh, the, the all of what grace brings. Wow, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. So we're standing in grace, but grace also sustains us. And grace is the way by which we are empowered to live. See the point? The point is it's all by grace. It's from faith to faith. We talked about that in chapter one. Uh, From faith, from beginning to end. It's not that you're saved and now, okay, now that you're saved by grace, okay, now get busy fulfilling the law. No, it's it's not to say that the law of God is not a a good template of what grace-filled living would look like, that we would be people that uh, live right and live righteously. But it's not the adherence to the law. It's not keeping the law that keeps us saved or that brings favor to God. No, it's just an indication that now that we're saved and we live by grace, it's God's grace that gives me the, the desire and the ability to do his will. And that grace is accessible to me now that I'm a child of God. Wow, what a what a thought. So the grace of God that brings salvation, right? That's Titus chapter two, is the grace that is mine in salvation to be zealous of good works. So even that which I do in this Christian life is not a matter of a matter of measuring up and making God happy with me. No, God loves you as much as he'll ever love you. There's nothing you can do today to make God love you anymore or to have a greater status with God. No, it's by grace that we live. And we want to live uh, to honor and glorify the God that has saved us. So by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Now look at verse number three. And not only so. So we're not only grateful for the amazing grace uh, that we have in Christ, but watch this, but we also We glory in tribulations also. Well, that doesn't make sense. So in other words, we find value in, we are glad for, we actually can express joy in tribulations, sufferings. We glory in tribulations also. How can a believer who has trusted Christ as Savior glory in tribulations? Well, there's a couple thoughts there. First of all, we see that when a person is saved, it doesn't necessarily change his circumstances. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden that you never have sickness or pain or bad circumstances or a persecution goes away. In fact, in many cases, when we get saved, it invites persecution. And sometimes suffering comes as a result of. But the Bible says there's a totally different attitude toward it because we can glory in those tribulations. Why? Because we know that suffering in the Christian life is going to produce patience or endurance. 
It's going to help me because I understand that there's context and God's at work. And uh, there's uh, he works all things together for good to them that love God. And God has a reason and a purpose. And he's helping me to understand things about him and about faith and about the future. And so as a believer, I can count it all joy when I fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of my faith produces or worketh patience. And so there is context for every single thing that happens to me when I'm saved. It's all a matter of God's gracious working in my life. Why? Because tribulation worketh patience and patience experience or settled character. The the more that I respond properly and by faith to what's happening in my life, the more uh, the more resolved I become in who I am in Christ. And you can't shake me. And, and yes, it, it might be painful. And yes, uh, people might turn their back on me. And yes, the uh, the painful and bad times might come. But all of this is producing patience and endurance and experience in my life. And I'm becoming that much more resolved to serve the God that has saved me. So we glory in tribulation. Why? Because we know that tribulation works works patience and patience works experience and experience produces hope. Well, that's where we began. The Bible says, by grace, we hope in the glory of God. We have great confidence that one day we will participate in God's glory. We will be in heaven. We will have new bodies and glorified bodies. That's a great confidence. But then this world and the trials of this world and the tribulations of this world, you know what they teach us? They teach us that this world is something on which we should have a loose grip. This world is not my home. And the more trials I face and the more persecution I endure and the more betrayal that I suffer helps me to have a greater resolution in what I will never lose, in the salvation that I will always have, in the future that has been already assured. And so what happens is even my sufferings are producing a greater confidence in what I have in my secured future. That is encouraging. Now, quickly, one last verse. Look at verse number five. And hope, that confidence of what God is doing, that confidence of where I'm going, that confidence in the promise that God has given, and hope maketh not ashamed. You know what that means? That means you won't be disappointed in what God promised you. Now, what did God promise you? He promised you salvation, a full and complete salvation, not just salvation from the penalty of sin, but a, a, a continued work of grace in your life where you're experiencing victory by the inworking power of God's Holy Spirit. One day you'll stand before Jesus and your, your body itself will be transformed uh, into like unto his glorious body. Uh, That's the hope that you have in Christ. That's the hope I have in Christ. It's a confidence, and you won't be disappointed. Have you ever been promised something and then been disappointed? Oh, this is going to be great, and it wasn't great. We're going to go to Disney World, but it didn't work out, right? No, this world will make you promises that it can't keep, and it can make promises it'll keep that won't measure up to what you expected, but hope confidence in what God has promised will never disappoint you. Hope maketh not ashamed. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. So what is our encouragement that we won't be disappointed? What keeps us sustained in our trials to realize that the promise that God made, the grace that God offers will not be Uh, will not disappoint us. Here it is. The Holy Spirit who lives inside of you, who came to reside in you the very moment you trusted Christ as Savior, reminds you every single day, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. He loved you. He died for you. He loved you. He said his son for you. He loves you. He has a plan for you. He loves you. There's purpose in your suffering. He loves you. He wants to settle your character to trust him. He loves you. He has a home for you. He loves you. You will not be disappointed. So I don't know what you're going through today. 
I don't know what kind of trial you're facing, but I do know this, you have God's grace. I do know this, you have peace with God. I do know this, uh, your expectation will be realized. You won't be disappointed. Every good thing you have is because of Jesus. Every good thing you will have is because of Jesus, and it's all yours because of faith in Jesus Christ. That's an encouraging thought. Now, we'll jump into verse number six on next episode. Until then, God bless you. 